This is the best way to play Mei in Overwatch 2. Mei is one of the best close range duelists in the game, thanks to the high utility in her wall and the high sustain in her cryo. Your wall usage is all about isolating targets and aggressing onto them. This could be as simple as walling off the enemy Ryan and walking onto him, walling off the enemy tank and walking onto the supports, or walling off enemy DPS to get into close range and duel them. Always look for those opportunities to take on the enemy squishies when possible, don't get greedy with your blizzards, and get creative with your positioning against the mobile, ranged comps. Mei's weapon, the Devil's Advocate, Mix may fire a stream of frost, dealing 100 DPS, slowing down a target by 40%, with 150 ammo in her clip. Alternatively, she can also fire icicles every 0.8 seconds, dealing 75 damage with no falloff. It doesn't take a genius to say that in most situations, you use your frost mode in close range, and at longer distances, you use your icicles instead. Some exceptions might be trying to one-shot a tracer up close with your icicle. With respect to the sightlines that you play, it's all about what comp you're up against. If you're playing up against something like an Ash Hanzo comp, then that's where you want to play shorter sightlines, pouncing onto them where possible. What's more interesting and more complex about Mei is her wall, which I'll get onto now. Mei's first ability, Trump's Wall. Mix may generate an ice wall split into 5 pillars, each worth 250 HP, with a 5 second duration, alongside a cooldown of 12 seconds. As I've just hinted, May wall is by far the most complex piece of her kit, and if you haven't seen by the timestamps already, this is going to be a lot more than simply split enemy Ryan foreheads. Now generally speaking, there's 4 key tenants for a good wall, nicely denoted in the acronym TITS, with timing, isolation, target priority, and space. And yes, this is a corny reference to Logic's album Tits or The Incredible True Story. For clarity, this does exclude walls that are used for mobility, like walling up, and it excludes walls done for rotations, both of which are more niche uses, so I'll talk about them afterwards. As for the first principle of timing, this is the easiest one to wrap your head around. This means that you just time your walls for when your team can actually get value out of them. His Iog stocks giving an example of that general sentiment here. The wall that you use here is pretty early, and your team can't really do anything with it because the Reinhardt still has his shield. Just wait a little bit, break the shield first, and once the shield is a little bit lower, that's when you can look to wall him off because then you can just break the rest of the shield and you can freeze him and you can try to actually confirm the kill that way. Here's also another good example on King Zo first point defense. Mays will commonly be playing close to points, and yet they'll try and look for a wall past the choke. Alternatively, the Mei could be playing at the choke, looking for a wall, but the rest of your team aren't holding or playing there at all. This all means that when you're aggressing, your team isn't, so the wall gets limited value. Moving on to the second and broadest principle, isolation. This means splitting or cutting off line of sight between one target and another. It could be between a tank and the supports, a DPS and their supports, or a DPS and their tank. Like right here, I see this and I'm like instantly vertical wall here, you know, okay? And then even here, right here, if you wall again vertically here, Arissa, Ash, no, I think you're high nooning, so maybe that's why you hold it. I mean, even here, right? Like, like yes, the Arissa will just use fortify and survive. Wall? Do I have wall? I must have wall, right? I you you do, it. yeah, you do. The wall, you still I was here? just slow. Maybe stop them from kiting? The last principle is target priority. Just because you wall off a tank doesn't necessarily mean that you have to focus them, especially if you're playing against someone like Arisa. If, for example, the enemy tank goes deep into your team and you wall them off, splitting them from their backline, you could very well turn around and focus their backline rather than the Arisa. Now this is somewhat hero dependent, but against most heroes, you win in close range here thanks to your cryo. You could do a wall here and double back and go for a backline and sneak up on it. Yeah, him, I you know? th no, that's Eureka. When I wall off Orisa, it's, it's a good walling of Orisa, but then what I actually did wrong was focusing on Orisa rather than everyone else behind right, this wall. Right, It's just that about like how much play. pressure yeah. you're going to get. Like, if you had your choice here as Mei, you could just walk in here and you would kill Ash. I mean, look at the AoE damage of your spray on this. Three squishies. Oh my yeah. gosh. It's it's over, right? It's it's ju just completely over for the enemy team, and you still have your ice block to play around uh, that, that the sleep dart. Now, not in all scenarios will you be able to access backline, and just pressuring the enemy tank when they're walled off is relatively fine, since you'll force out multiple cooldowns and get a good trade-off. But when you see the opportunity arise to focus down squishies, you should definitely take it. Now, the last type of wall is one used for space. When I say this, I'm referring to where you hold an off-angle, and because you're such a good close-range duelist, if anyone decides to contest you, you wall them off to control the space that you're holding. For example, on King Zhou, you could be holding Hotel, and if a Genji or Hanzo decide to jump onto you, you just wall them off and kill them. 
This could also be done around the statue too in defense, and is best done when you have shorter sightlines. You could simply hold an off angle and spam, 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 spam. Hanzo take, tries to take an angle, you wall him off, you freeze him, you use your ice block, and again, the same thing. Either you get the kill or you force absolute panic from the enemy team trying to control the Hanzo. What I learned with my, with my little time is like finding out whether I needed to be selfish with my walls. In other words, I'm gonna play around punishing the enemy front line on something that my team could follow up. Um, or selfless in terms of I'm playing, um, or selfish, excuse me, for I'm playing for myself, I'm taking an angle, I'm taking it to spam to control the DPS. Now I want to delve into more niche walls. First off, here's some poor explaining how you can wall defensively to buy you and your team some time if, for example, you're getting run over by a coalescence, beats, bap window, etc. Say the front line has broken and the opposing team decides that they want a power play and they pop transcendence, covalescence, sound barrier, any of them. Well, your May can respond by throwing up a wall, even an imperfect wall that they have to take a second or two to go around, and that buys you some time. You're not terribly threatened by their power play when it's down a couple people. Then once they have rounded the wall with those six people, and you've taken off a couple seconds, maybe three seconds if you're lucky, now you can answer with your own support ultimate, so maybe you match your sound bearer to their sound bearer. Well, that works out just great. Another use of wall is for verticality. Verticality is just really simple. You wall yourself up to high ground and utilize the fact that you're a great close range duelist. There's this infamous clip of Backbone doing this on Colosseo against the Atlanta Reign in the mid-season madness, and as you can see, he's probably the best May player in the world. There's also using the verticality of your wall to reposition immobile heroes in more powerful positions. What can you do with May wall here? Oh, you think you get me up on this uh, side yeah, ground on the side right? Oh yeah, you got you yeah. made. Yeah, absolutely. You guys could have May walled up here like five, six seconds ago and just had your on a crouch right here. Bingo. They walk through there, massive nade. You uh, can nade, heal your yeah. team, and it's so hard for them to see you. And even if they do see you, you just drop and you go play stairs or you play corner. Easy yep. peasy. There's also another clip playing in the background of a contender's team doing the same thing, but on Havana and with High Noon. The key thing here is to be creative. Utilize the cart to get extra verticality, and if you want to see him or in a more coordinated environment, this should definitely be something in the back of your minds. There's also using walls for rotations. For example, on Midtown Attack, you could wall here, making it safe for you and your team to rotate in the building. I can't find any examples of this in Overwatch League, but I do remember the Spitfire doing this quite a while ago. And lastly, make sure to cancel your wall if you end up blocking the LOS of your teammates, and note that you can wall Bap's lamp to deactivate it. As you can see, Mace Wall is one of the most complex abilities in the game, so those are some key principles and also niche use cases where you can use May Wall. May's second ability, Block. Mix may gain 50 HPS for 3 seconds, paired with the 12 second cooldown. You also restore 15 ammo per second, block all lines of sight, and become invincible in your cryo. Similar to Arisa's Fortify and Arna's Sleep, since this is a defensive cooldown, you should only use it when you need to, instead of actively looking to get value out of your cryo. It should be a fail safe or get out of jail free card for when you get pressured. The only time you'll be aggressively or proactively using cryo is when you're trying to dodge or cleanse certain abilities in a 1v1. For instance, dodging a Widow Headshot, Honor Sleep, Ash Dynamite, etc. May's ultimate, The Seven Deadly Sins, makes May emit snow in a circular area with a 10 meter radius, dealing 20 DPS, lasting 4.25 seconds, taking roughly 2 seconds to freeze the targets. Note that the freeze progress is greatly increased by using your primary fire. The most applicable piece of advice is to not always look for these massive clumped up blizzards. Catching one or two enemies should be plenty to win the team fight with, especially if you've got a good wall with it. If you wall off the enemy run for example and blizzards, you can guarantee a kill there with decent certainty. It's also the placement of your blizzards. If you're trying to catch some squishies in the backline, it's important to chuck the blizzard where you think they might be moving or retreating to, because keep in mind, the 10 meter radius of blizzard isn't too big. Once you miss the wall, you still could have like chucked it. Like right now, like right here, but you gotta get it there. You wait too long so she almost has another bubble, and then you also don't throw it deep enough. The penultimate thing I'll touch on is the timing of your blizzards. Just as with most ultimates, use it in the mid fight since there'll be less cooldowns like Amp, Suzu, and Zarya bubbles to escape from your blizzards. And lastly, you can use Mail defensively to protect yourself and your team if you get rushed on. So using your ultimate here does two things. For one, it freezes the enemy team so you can kill them. And two, it means that the enemy team can't follow up. It's not just offensive, you can also use your ultimate kind of defensively. Because the enemy team has the immortality field and you don't. 
which means that the enemy team just, like, they can continue dealing damage. But because you just got your ultimate, you could use it. It forces out the Reinhardt because, you know, he can't really do anything with his shield. And even if your Genji gets picked, like, with Mei ultimate, if the enemy team doesn't have Transcendence, you can still win the fight 5v6 if the enemy team is in a position like this. Like, the enemy team is pushed up really, really, really far. Now onto the final section, positioning and playstyle. Now, for those who've watched my stuff before, you'll know there's four key guidelines taken from Coach Nata, which I'll show on Icon Ward first. The first rule is to have cover or a corner. Now, cover or corners ensure that you stop taking damage at any moment, but corners can also give a nice cue in order to get a good wall off. Simply walling a target as they turn the corner can force a lot of cooldowns from the enemy team in response. The second rule is to have line of sight, so you can see what and where you're shooting. The third rule is to have distance from angles, so you have plenty of time to react to flankers, and the last rule is rotations. Now, on every map, you won't be able to do this, but where possible, these rotations can be done either before or after you use your wall. Remember, you're a great close range duelist, so heroes like Cassidy or Soldier will struggle fighting you. Especially Cassidy, who, keep in mind, you greatly benefit from the flashbang change since you just ice pockets. Now onto playstyle and compositions. When playing against a hard dive comp, you want to play soft off angles. You don't want to be hard flanking and playing splits, but you also don't want to be stacked on top of your backline. I recommend checking out my Ash or Cassidy guide for more details, since the same logic applies to them. Against poke heavy comps, short sightlines are key. I already touched upon it with my rotations example on Lycanwald, but here's another example on King's Row. If you're playing up against Ash, Widow, Hanzo, or heroes who want to split and take angles, you could place yourself on those angles in the first place, and if they get close, you can draw them. And you can also use your wall if you'd like. Now against Brawl or Perk Brawl, there's nothing too much to say, unless you're playing against some May Brawl Mirror, which can get pretty complicated. There's things like walling first or walling second, playing stacked with your team or playing splits, and honestly, most of it is pretty team-based. If you're one of the few people who are interested in that kind of thing, I recommend checking the May section of my old Brawl Guide from quite a while back. And that's it for the video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if this video helped to raise your IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time.